The test is in four part, part 1, part 2, part 3, and part 4. Now look at part 1. Part 1 You will hear a conversation between two students. One of them is explaining to the other how to use the university library. First, you will have 20 seconds to look at questions 1 to 4. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 4. Excuse me, Lily. Could you help me? You know, we've got an essay to write about eating customs across the world. Yeah, we have to borrow some books, don't we? Yes, but I missed the library training. Do you think you could show me how to find the books and how to take them out? Sure, no problem. Shall I tell you about the different parts of the library first? Oh, yes. Thank you very much. OK, then. Let's look at the plan of the library. Here, you can see the main door on the north side that leads into the lobby. In the middle of the building, there's a big open PC zone. The lift and stairs are on the left as you go in, and on the other side of the building, there's the library cafe. That part of the library is pretty sociable. It's a good place to study with friends. I really prefer to study alone. Is there anywhere in the library I can go? Oh, if you like studying in a quiet place, it's better to go upstairs to the silent zone. As you come out of the lift or up the stairs, you'll see a section on your right facing north which is closed off. That's the silent zone. On the other side facing south are the bookshelves with all the cookbooks and... All before you hear the next part of the conversation, you will have to look at questions 5 to 10. Listen carefully and answer questions 5, 10. Now, can you show me how to find a book? Well, the library is very big and the books on food could be under cookery or they could be in history or even entertainment. So the first thing to do is to look it up in the online catalogue. Where do I do that? It's easy. There are lots of computers in the library for that. OK. I see. Right. You look up the title first. When you found the book, you'll see it has a class mark next to it. The class mark is one or two letters and a number. Make a note of the class mark. Then look it up on the plan of the library. The plan shows you exactly what section of the library the books are actually kept in. Thank you very much, Lily. So how do I borrow a book? That's simple too. When you go to the library, you'll have to take your student ID card. When you want to borrow a book, you take it downstairs to the scanner. Then, scan your ID card first. Next, open the book and slide it under the scanner until it makes a sound, a short beep. And that's all you have to do. Oh, sorry, I forgot. At the end, the system prints out a ticket. It's a good idea to keep it for a while just in case you have a problem with your loan. Thanks again, Lily. You've been really kind. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part two. Part two. This morning we are going to look at the issue of cloning. I'd like to begin by looking at some examples of animals that have been cloned before moving on to looking at how cloning is defined. First, look at questions eleven to thirteen. As you listen to the first part of the interview, answer questions eleven to thirteen. Good morning, and welcome to this series of lectures on man interfering with nature. This morning, we are going to look at the issue of cloning. I'd like to begin by looking at some examples of animals that have been cloned before moving on to looking at how cloning is defined. The first example I'd like to talk about is Idaho Jem. Who was the very first mule to be cloned? Mules are a combination of horse and donkey. Idaho Jem is an identical copy of his brother Taz, who is a racing champion. Thus, we can make the conclusion here that he was cloned to follow in his brother's footsteps. The next example I'd like to refer to is Cece, which stands for copycat. Like her name suggests, she was the first cloned kitten. Interestingly, Cece was created in a laboratory in the state of Texas by the very same scientists who made Dolly the sheep in Scotland. Cece is physically identical to her mother Rainbow, and what is important about this is that it has opened the doors for people to clone their pets in the future. Now, the last animal example I'd like to look at today is the pig. In two thousand and one. Five piglets were born, all female. They were created by a firm who claimed that their birth is an important step for medicine. The idea is that pig organs and cells could be used in human transplants because the pigs have been cloned without a certain cell. This cell is a vital link because it is the one in human beings that is responsible for making the body reject donor organs. This means that not only is the transplant operation unsuccessful, but the patient's life could be at risk. Now, I'd like to discuss some of the current definitions of cloning. Now, look at questions fourteen to twenty. One kind of cloning, the kind commonly found in plants, occurs when plants reproduce themselves around the original plants, known as the parent plants. New plants can then grow. This is quite a natural process by which plants can form more of the same type of plant. Though you may not be aware of it, another type of cloning happens quite naturally in your body when old cells need to be replaced. Cells in your body split into two and make new chromosomes, and it is the chromosomes that contain our genes. Embryo splitting is another form of cloning, which can happen quite naturally when cells split to form two identical twins. You may then be asking yourself what all the fuss is about. If cloning does in fact happen naturally, because sometimes man can interfere with nature and it can work, take. Embryo splitting, as an example. Now, this type of cloning is quite common in farming, and it is used to breed new bulls and cows. Embryos are placed into foster mother cows, and these then grow into calves. And though some may consider this to be artificial, it has been going on for the last ten years with relatively few problems. Now, the last type of cloning I'd like to mention is perhaps the most controversial. 
This type of cloning is called nuclear transfer, and it is when the nucleus of a cell is put into an egg of another animal that is genetically the same. This is done in a laboratory, and after about five or six days, the embryo is implanted into a donor mother, which is how Dolly the sheep was made. One argument in favor of cloning is that it can help in medicine, as in the case of pigs being used in transplant operations. It is true that many people can wait for up to a year for a new kidney, and then still run the risk of their bodies rejecting the donor kidney. But will using pig organs really be the solution? To answer this question, I'd like to take a look at some responses to the whole idea of using pig organs in humans. Neil Blackwood, who works for the company that cloned the five piglets, described it as a major medical advance that could solve the global problem of a lack of organs to use in transplant operations. This could lead in the future to saving human lives. Sheila Halliday, a leading transplant surgeon, does not share his view. She believes that although it is possible to use pig organs in humans, there are very real dangers. Halliday points out that diseases and infections could be passed from pig to human. Of course, she does not yet know this for certain, which is why Halliday strongly advocates that more scientific research be done. She firmly believes pig organs should not be used in human operations until these findings are made public. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a phone conversation giving information about a health and fitness centre. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Hello. Hello. Is that Miss Heidi Jones? Yes. Good morning, Miss Jones. I'd like to take a few minutes of your time to tell you about the Seven Oaks Health and Fitness Centre, which is in your suburb. Would that be convenient? Okay. Well, the centre's not far from you. It's on the corner of Marion Street and Giles Street, and has a large car park. It's open every day of the week, opening on weekdays at six a.m. and at nine a.m. at the weekend. It closes at nine thirty p.m. Monday to Friday, and on Saturday at four p.m. and Sunday at two p.m. We also have childcare Monday to Saturday from nine in the morning until midday for a small extra charge, so you can leave your children in safe hands while you attend one of our classes, or perhaps have a swim, or if you just want to relax in the spa and sauna or steam room. Talking of classes, we have a very wide range which are designed to suit all different levels of fitness and individual needs. I mentioned the pool just now. Well, in addition to swimming laps or just relaxing, we also offer aqua aerobic classes, which are 45-minute classes that use the therapeutic effects of water. 
This provides a very safe and effective exercise and is suitable for all fitness levels, as well as being a lot of fun. Many people who haven't been exercising for a while start in the aqua classes, as do people who need to take care after hospital surgery, for example. These classes are very popular and are scheduled every weekday, Monday to Friday, and on Saturday afternoon and Sunday morning. Another very popular activity in the pool area is learning to swim, and these swimming classes are held at 4pm every weekday and in the mornings at the weekend. By the way, they're open to both adults and children of any age. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. Now, it would take too much of your time to tell you in detail about all our programs as we have a very wide range of activities at different times. However, I'll just outline some of them. Our super circuit classes are extremely popular and you get a good aerobic workout while toning your muscles. They're easy to learn as you combine using hydraulic equipment with exercises guaranteed to give you a good cardio workout. The teachers are very good and there's a fun atmosphere. And the classes are very effective in assisting weight loss, relieving stress, lowering blood pressure and generally increasing fitness. Oh, and I haven't mentioned our range of aerobic and step classes of different types which suit all levels. Our specially designed aerobics room holds over 55 people and our highly qualified and trained staff can advise you as to which class might suit you. We are inviting you to a free one week trial period when you can come and try any of the classes or activities before you make the decision to join. By the way, there is also a large and very well equipped gym where we offer free fitness assessments and you can have an individual program designed just for you. Also, the cardiovascular room has the latest range of machines which help you burn fat, increase your fitness or just warm up. They're very popular as you can forget all about the calorie burning by watching your favourite music videos on TV while you exercise. Right now we have a very special new member joining fee offer which allows two memberships for the price of one, a real bargain. So if you can, bring along a friend who'd like to get fit as well in time for summer. Come along and try us out. You can meet the staff. Try out some of the classes for a week, absolutely free. And then, if you like us, Sign up for only $110 each for six months. Thanks for taking the time to learn about the centre and I hope we'll see you there soon, Heidi. I'll put one of our brochures in the mail for you right now. Bye for now. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part four. Part four. You'll hear a program on the city of Brisbane. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Today in our Around the World programme, Mr White is going to recommend a charming city to you, Brisbane. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Have you ever been to Brisbane? Well, if you are looking for a mild climate, a relaxed atmosphere, and a lot of culture, Brisbane might be the place for you. Its sunny cafes and offshore islands attract surfers and sun lovers, but it is also the arts capital of Queensland, with many museums and art galleries. This thriving artistic setting mixes well with Brisbane's beach town atmosphere. Together these two qualities make Brisbane a very desirable place to live. No wonder since 1980 over a half a million Australians have moved here. Brisbane is now Australia's third largest city. English settlers living in Australia established Brisbane in 1842. At that time, more than a 100,000 Aboriginal Australians were living in Queensland. As the settlers discovered Queensland's resources, more and more of them moved in. Regretfully, the settlers drove the Aboriginal Australians from their lands. By 1859, Brisbane had grown into a prosperous city. In 1988, the world watched as Brisbane hosted the World Expo. This international fair showcased new technology, but it also showed off the city of Brisbane to the world. Brisbane also hosts a wide range of events year-round. In April, everyone can enjoy a few laughs at the Comedy Festival, and movie lovers will enjoy a film festival that takes place every August. For two weeks in September, there is an outdoor festival of the arts. In October, a music festival draws a large crowd. And in January, you can see Brisbane's most bizarre event. You may be surprised to hear that. The annual cockroach races. That's right, people really do train and race cockroaches. Brisbane's nice climate and compact design makes it easy to explore on foot. Follow the golden arrows in the footpath around the city centre. This will lead you on a tour of Brisbane's historical district. From the city centre, take a boat across the Brisbane River to Southbank. This area is popular for its bike paths, beach and weekend market. Hundreds of artists display their wares at this market. It's a great place to pick up some interesting handicrafts. Well, I think what you must be interested in is the unique native animals. Yes, you shouldn't visit Australia without seeing its trademark animals, the koala and kangaroo. The Lone Pine Koala Sanctuary has both. It is located just outside the city centre in beautiful Parkland. You can hold one of the park's 130 koalas or feed the kangaroos. Another quiet refuge from the city is Mount Kuta, about 8 kilometres from Brisbane. On a clear day, it offers spectacular views of the city. It also has hiking trails and beautiful gardens. Along the Brisbane River, a sunset cruise is also very relaxing. The areas around Brisbane are impressive. A coastal drive south of Brisbane will take you along the Gold Coast. This famous coastline boasts some of Australia's best beaches. Stradbroke Island is another easy day trip from Brisbane. A cliff on the island called Point Lookout offers a great view. From there you can see dolphins swimming below. Brisbane Forest Park, to the north of Brisbane, is a great place for hiking and camping. These great getaways, along with Brisbane's own laid-back charm, make this city an ideal place to visit. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.